Today, we're going to be installing Pop! OS. So now, in case you're unfamiliar, Pop! OS is a Linux distro based on Ubuntu. It's actually designed to cater to gamers out of the box, because if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it installs the proprietary driver for you. And of course, Pop! OS has its own theme, but it keeps the vanilla Ubuntu workflow. So I'm going to be giving you my first impressions on the installation and use of Pop! OS. But without further ado, Let's get right into it. Okay, so now the website is system76.com slash pop. Okay, so now that we've recommended the latest version, however, I'd recommend downloading the LTS version because LTS versions are more stable and they have more support. That's why I'd recommend staying away from short-term intermediate releases and only using long-term support versions. Today we're going to download the LTS, and one thing that makes it less user-friendly than Ubuntu is it has two downloads, depending on your hardware configuration. This may confuse some people, but I'm going to break it down. So if you have integrated graphics or an AMD graphics card, you're going to go with the Intel slash AMD download. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're going to go with the NVIDIA download. By the way, they note the NVIDIA ISO installs the proprietary driver, but anyway, I have an AMD processor with integrated graphics. So I'm going to go with the Intel slash AMD download. Okay, and then you're going to save the file. Now, because I want this to be from a new user perspective, I haven't already downloaded this file. So we're going to do it together. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Alright, so now that my file's downloaded, as you can see right here, I'm going to install it in a VM. Now, I want to install it in my Windows 10 VM because I want a dual boot, because I want this to be from like a new user perspective, and most new users will have Windows. However, in my experience with the installation, I found that dual booting with it is extremely complicated. And going through all that, it's maybe something for a different day. So I'm just going to do pure Pop! OS in a separate virtual machine. Alright, I'm going to connect my pop os iso this would be the equivalent of plugging the pop os installation media into your computer and one thing i noticed is that they have a really cool font for the debug messages and it's even big i guess they want to show off how cool it is all right i'm going to be using english and i'm actually in canada and i type us keyboard it is kind of racist that <laughs> If you live in Canada, it assumes you use the French keyboard. But anyway, let's get back to the installation procedure. So now it does not show the dual boot option, but it wouldn't show the dual boot option if I booted this in my Windows 10 VM, because this was not designed with dual booting in mind. Yes, you could do custom, but you basically need to spell everything out for it. In your UEFI BIOS, it demands that you have an EFI partition that's at least 500 megabytes. And by default, on a Windows installation, it's only 200 megabytes. And we're going to do a clean install. So it's this tiny virtual disk. And I'm not going to encrypt it, because for one thing, I'm going to be deleting this virtual machine right after I'm done. And I'd rather just encrypt my home folder anyway. That's where all the sensitive data is, after all. But anyway, this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Alright, you notice it gives us the option to either shut down or restart. Ubuntu would only give you the option to restart. And I also noticed that it doesn't do the user setup during the installation. It does it all after installation. But I'm going to go restart the device. I presume by doing the installation this way, it's easier for manufacturers to do an OEM install. Alright, welcome. And I already said we wanted English US. Location service is on. And we are in the Toronto time zone. I don't want to connect any online accounts because I'm going to be deleting this virtual machine right when I'm done. It's going to set up my user, and like my username, just for password. I'm not telling you what it is. It takes me straight to the login screen. I'll just go and punch my password. Oh, and you just rebooted. Don't know why I need to reboot again. All right, so now that we're in Pop! OS, first thing we're going to do is enable scaling. I'm going to go pick my display resolution. That's close enough. I know, my screen resolution is crappy. But anyway, let's see what apps we have. Then we have the Pop Shop. Man, let's see all the apps. And I mean, so this is overall much cleaner than Ubuntu, because if you put activities away, it likes to maximize screen real estate. You have LibreOffice, Snaps, and Utilities. Man, let's see what updates we have. Let's update all of these. And download one at a time. Man, this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. That update was quick, and a driver's window just appeared with OpenVM Tools desktop. That's 
basically a Linux version of VMware tools. So let's install those. So now this will take a while, so let's speed this up. I notice that my display just scaled out and scaled back. And actually, I didn't speed up anything, because that's actually how long it took. The reason why it gave me that option is because I'm not using a Windows 10 VM. Like, this is configured specifically for Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distros. But anyway, let's talk about getting some work done. First thing to go do is go into LibreOffice, test, file, created on pop OS. Okay, then we're gonna save the file. Oh man, I need a drones files folder. Oh, I just called it untitled. Because I didn't change the name. Actually, I like it as a list view, more specifically at 50%. Put my folder here. Let's just change this to test.ot. And if you open that up, you can see, yep, test file created on pop OS. And actually, I did pop OS wrong. Let's crack that. That's how the word pop OS is written. I think it's just to make it look cool. And let's actually go into system settings, because I'm all about customization. I don't just want the same generic OS. Like, I actually want to make it my own. This is very similar to the Ubuntu settings app. There's no Wi-Fi adapter for this VM because I'm connecting using a bridge connection. Oh, that's lock screen background. What if I lock this? Oh, they are really trying to make this look cool. And let's see what backgrounds I have. Which one do I like best? Every time I think you get to the bottom, it loads more. You know what? I think I like this one best. Lock screen. I'm just going to use the same background. I just tend to use the same background for everything. One of my notification settings. Prop ups. It's not screen notifications on. Don't show message content on lock screen. Nobody needs to know what I'm doing on my computer. Huh, I wonder, what is Eddie? I'm gonna have to look at that after this thing's app. Search, oh come on, search everything. Let's manage and salt languages. Oh, nothing else to install. Universal access, oh, it just crashed. There's universal access. Now if you're using iOS, you may know this as accessibility. I don't think we need to do anything here. Let's just skip all my accounts and go straight to privacy. Yes, on Mac, screen lock please. Decent history, I actually don't like it. Let's automatically purge temporary files after 30 days. Decent settings, I don't think I need to do anything here. Bunk the screen after one minute. I like to be the most secure. On Mac, one idle, one hour. I like to have it on battery power, 30 minutes. Unplugged in, one hour. But virtual machines don't have batteries. And of course you can change your keyboard shortcuts. And touchpad, wow, you get barely any settings in here. Oh, firmware. Oh, that's kind of limited. Not a lot of settings in there. But I am just curious. What is Eddie? Oh, it's for installing applications from dev files. On Ubuntu, it's the same program as Ubuntu software, but on Pop OS, you just have the pop shop, and I guess it can't really handle dev files. Anyway, and you know I said it caves to gamers out of the box? Well, Steam installer is one of the first things that you see in pop picks. Let's search for some apps. Under they have Spotify, because I cannot live without music on my computer. Oh, yes, they do. Install it. I read and accept the Spotify license. Actually, no, I didn't. In real life. Anyway, um, what else do I want to install? Let's see if they have Flowblade, because I rely on it to edit my videos. If I can't install Flowblade, I don't know what you're doing. And yes, they do. Let's install it. And also, let's look for known tweaks, because I want to be able to customize this. I know, Linux Mint, you can install known tweaks, but it just doesn't work at all, for some reason. Anyway, I'm waiting for this. Let's just see if they... Uh, Anything else installed. I love how they have their own icon theme. They're really trying to make their OS look cooler than other OSs. Also, just like on Linux Mint, you don't have that ugly mouse cursor on Spotify, unlike Ubuntu. That loading thing just went away, so that would tell me that all software has been installed. Okay, yeah, let's go into tweaks. Before you see how Flowblade runs, show icons on desktop, mounted volumes, please. Oh wow, you have a lot of extensions. I'm gonna go straight to Windows. All right, this is easier to customize than Linux Mint. Yeah, let's put the max, max minimize buttons. And I actually like these on the left because I just like that Mac look and feel. Just my preference. Actually, oh yes, let's go to dark. Oh yeah. Now let's see how Flowblade runs. Come on, can't go full screen. That's silly. Yeah, it runs fine. Just virtual machine taking it still here. Yeah, you got all the same apps as Ubuntu. One exception is Geary. Ubuntu ships its Thunderbird by default. I actually use iCloud as my personal email provider. No, I'm not typing my email address so I can give my personal email away to the internet, but for my YouTube email, I use Gmail. And it goes straight into settings, more specifically the Google Account setup. You know what, I'm not gonna bother with this, since I'm gonna be deleting this VM after I'm done. Right, let's go into terminal. Of course, you can do standard bash commands. 
Oh, and I'm running 5.3.0-7642 generic as my Linux kernel. Let's try out Firefox. Let's see how Firefox runs. Yeah, I'm gonna go to YouTube. So let's go to YouTube.com. I don't really like any of these suggestions. None of them particularly capture my interest, so search. Let's look up a really cool channel. And yep, I have 28 subscribers at the time of shooting this video. Okay, and my last video was Linux Mint installation and first impressions. You know what, let's watch this video, since it's playing anyway. Can I go HD? That default resolution is kind of crappy. Hmm, plays just fine. Okay, we don't need to watch the whole thing. You can check that out on your own time. You have a lot of the default no maps. So I don't think there's really anything else to try on. So, let's reach a verdict. Would I recommend Pop! OS for a beginning user? No. The only reason why I'm saying no is because it's really tricky to set up on a dual boot, if not impossible. So if you really want to try out Pop! OS, I'd suggest try it out in a virtual machine or even a separate system. But it's good for gamers in that it installs a proprietary NVIDIA driver out of the box if you are using an NVIDIA card. <laughs> and it just locked on me. And it also likes to maximize screen real estate by just showing you this top bar, and that's it. Of course, there's more customizations I'd do with it. But as I keep saying on my channel, the two distros I'd recommend for beginners are Ubuntu or Linux Mint. And besides, this is a Ubuntu-based distro, and Ubuntu-based distros are really just different looks and feels to Ubuntu. It's really just a pre-applied theme on Ubuntu. And since I would be customizing this anyway, then I say on my channel is distribution does not matter, but hey, it does try to look cool out of the box, so I gotta give him props for that. But anyway, those are my first impressions on the installation and use of Pop! OS. Thanks for watching. If I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments, and if you like this video, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.